Well, welcome back to Queen City News Now. We have a special event that's happening today. You're looking live or no live look right now. You're watching Carolina's own Queen City News Now, where we are going to be looking at a special planet parade that's going to be happening in the sky, and you don't even need a telescope to take a look at it. All you have to do is look up. Candace Jordan from Gastonia's Shale Museum is joining us live uh, with what you could expect first this morning. Candace, thanks so much for joining us. Hi, welcome, and thank you guys for having me here. Absolutely. Let's talk about this awesome planet parade that's happening in the sky. We're going to be able to see these planets in order uh, all the way from Venus all the way through Jupiter. How rare is something like this to happen? Yeah, so you guys can see six planets with your own eyes without a telescope in the sky, and you guys are going to be able to find all six tomorrow morning. So you wake up in the morning, uh, get out there about 45 minutes to an hour before sunrise, and you'll see all six. Now, let's talk about the six that you can see. You're going to be able to see Mercury, mm -hmm. Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. Now, if you count, that's only five. So that's six one. If you look down at your feet, congratulations, guys. You can see Earth. <laughs> Nice. It's like the closest view you'll ever see, right? <laughs> um, but to get them in that alignment, because that's actually the the alignment that they are closest to furthest away from the sun. Mm -hmm. So to see them in that order is actually pretty rare. It takes it about um, every 18 years or so. So the last time we saw this was back in December of 2004. And we're not going to see this again until 2040. So if you want to see this rare event, get out in the morning. now. Yeah. You probably guys want to know how you're going to find it, right? Yes, that's the question, right? We, we want to look up in the sky and we, we want to check this out. Do we need a telescope? Do we need this fancy sky gazing equipment and cameras and the big lenses in order to see this? Or is this something that we can maybe go in our backyard and catch in the night sky? Well, I will say most people have the necessary equipment. You need your eyeballs in order to see these things. Now, you're going to go out, look towards the sunrise. So that's going to be towards the east. When you orient yourself towards the sunrise, they're also going to be to the right as well. And when you go looking for them in the sky, they're actually going to be in a line. And that is not a coincidence, guys. That's our uh, what we call the ecliptic. It's the path the sun takes across the sky. And basically, that's the way our planets orbit. If you imagine they orbit the sun on a sheet of paper, we just do a racetrack around on this sheet of paper that's that line in the sky you'll see so you can see right there mercury venus mars jupiter and saturn and the cool thing is the crescent moon is also going to be between venus and huh. mars so it kind of gets that earthbound component there that's the crescent moon don't expect to see a big old full moon there i love it and hey i think the full moon might even hinder our ability to see the planets because it could be so bright in the sky speaking of which how do we know what we're looking at let's say we're looking at exactly where you tell us to an hour before sunrise and we see a whole bunch of twinkling stars in the sky how can we tell the difference between a star or if we're looking at a planet yeah, so one of my favorite things to tell people, because most people have heard this song before, twinkle, twinkle, little star. Mm -hmm. Well, if it twinkles, it's a star. If it doesn't twinkle, it's what we call a planet. Um, so there are going to be steady lights in the sky. They're not going to move. They're just going to be a nice steady light. They're not going to twinkle. If it moves and it blinks, guys, that's an airplane. Just so you know. <laughs> so we mentioned really quick about how maybe the full moon might hinder your ability to, to see the stars. What if somebody lives close to the, the, the uptown city center? We're surrounded by around a lot of light pollution. Why does light pollution hinder our ability to see the stars? And where should we go if we want to get a better view? Well, this is your job entirely. You forecast things that happen within our atmosphere. And our atmosphere does a really great job of bouncing light around. So mm -hmm. when we have all those lights on, especially, say, Center City, uh, you know, you're getting a lot of light pollution that's kind of coming back into your direction. Um, but luckily, the planets you can see, even if you live in light polluted areas. Now, some of them may be a little bit dimmer, but one that you will definitely see no matter what is Venus, because Venus is the third brightest object in the sky behind the sun and the moon. Um, so Venus, very easy to find, even if you're right smack dab in the middle of Charlotte, you'll be able to find it. And uh, also the cloud cover is going to play a big role into that. The visibility was not too helpful this morning. Tomorrow morning might be a little cloudy as well, but making sure to have those clear skies overhead. Uh, Candace, you mentioned having the planets in order, which is important. Is there ever an opportunity where we could see the planets in the sky, but they're not quite in order or maybe a little bit out of alignment? Yeah, so to see multiple planets in the sky, actually you can see it 
I would say year round, um, maybe not every day of the year, but generally speaking, the majority of the year, you can find a planet in the sky, whether it be um, near sunrise, near sunset, those are kind of the best times to find them. Um, it's just a rarity to see all five of those visible in that particular order. So that's what's making this so rare. I love it. And again, not, probably not happening again till 2040. Last time it happened was uh, 2004. Uh, and, and you obviously know so much about this and folks that might want to learn more. How can they come come out and, and check out the museum? Yeah, so come on over. We are at the Shill Museum that's located in Gastonia. Shillmuseum.org is a great resource if you want to start planning your adventure ahead of time. Um, we've got a lot of stuff here. We have planetarium shows uh, that will get you underwater. We'll get you some that talk about space and more. We've even got some that are great for our younger folks. So those in preschool, toddlers, we have a Sesame Street show. But we also have a lot of stuff here from gym mining, block party. If you're a fan of barbecue, we even have a barbecue exhibit. Oh, wow. Well, <laughs> I like barbecue. You had me sold. We should have started with that. <laughs> Candace, <laughs> Candace Jordan with the Shield Museum. Thank you so much for joining us. And hopefully you enjoy the, the night sky view like so many of us will be doing later this weekend. Thank you, guys.